We live in a country where men and women are meant to be equal. Same pay, same careers, same opportunities. But children as young as seven think that boys and girls are fundamentally different. I think boys are cleverer than girls. Men are better at like, being in charge. I would describe a girl as being pretty and that these differences will define the lives they live as adults. If the woman has a child, the men have to go to work and earn some money. Men are more successful because they could have more harder jobs. I don't believe that biology alone can explain these differences. I think the answer lies in the society we live in. I'm Dr Javed Abdelmuneh. What if they called you all sweet pea? I'm going to find out if by turning a class of seven-year-old primary school children... What are we doing? ..gender neutral... You've got to start going to the same toilet. No! ..I can change the way they think about themselves. Everyone can have a chance to do what they like. ..and the way they think about their future. I do not like reading, but I like reading that book. And if I can do that, perhaps there's a chance of making their adult lives really equal made to be underpaid. Would you dress your daughter in that? It kind of makes something that seems so innocent not really that innocent after all. But it isn't going to be easy. I don't want to do it anymore! I want it to go back to boys and girls. I didn't think I could do it at first. What we're trying to do could actually be very difficult. I think you're going to struggle. Every child deserves the same opportunities in life. But unless we stop treating our boys and girls differently, that simply isn't going to happen. This is Lane's End Primary School on the Isle of Wight. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Mr. Spice. where, at the beginning of the term, I ran a series of tests to measure the level of difference between the boys and girls in this class of seven-year-olds. Differences in areas like levels of self-esteem, confidence and empathy. And the results were shocking. I'm seeing here uh, evidence that the girls significantly underestimate how clever they are and have less self-esteem and self-confidence. I think men are better at, like, being in charge. And the boys can't seem to express their emotions. What's happiness? Uh, I don't know. Except anger, which is really disturbing. You don't you just have to let go! Hot-headed? Knock, knock. Yeah! Are we learning today? Hello, how are you? I'm determined to tackle these differences via a number of interventions. Oh, how are you, sir? Nice to see you. Nice to, see you. Yeah, to see if by treating the children the same, those differences will disappear. We've got some boards which you're all going to help put up. It says that boys are strong. Yeah! But so are girls. Yeah! Girls are strong. <laughs> And that has meant getting rid of anything that marks out boys and girls as different. Okay. From their classroom to their teacher. Lexi, you're right there, love. You said love. You just called Lexi love. I'm halfway through my time here at Lane's End, and I've had some success in getting the children to think differently about traditional roles for men and women. I think that it's really cool that it's a girl mechanic. And how they view each other and what they're capable of. Now I think that girls and boys can be strong. But it hasn't all been plain sailing. <laughs> and it's clear that I'm facing attitudes that even the people who know them best see as deeply ingrained. I think from the moment they're born, they are aware of 
gender from the clothes that they're given to the language people use. So even though we do a lot of work around it, it's very much that they've still got very set mindsets on what is acceptable for their gender. It's a new day at Lane's End, and week three of my time with Graham Andre's class of seven-year-olds. In just a couple of weeks, these children will be retested to see if any of my interventions have managed to reduce the differences between them as boys and girls. Okay, yesterday afternoon, we did some puzzles. Who would like to do another one again this morning? Including when it comes to their ability to manipulate shapes and understand patterns. Known as spatial awareness. Has everybody got the challenge? Start now. Go. Something that boys, thanks in part to the kinds of toys they play with, have a natural advantage at. I think Minecraft and Lego help me because you can build stuff in Minecraft and Lego and try and fit in a little blocks. An advantage that results in boys' dominance in jobs like engineering and architecture. In fact, in the UK, only 13% of people in science and maths-related careers are women. Give yourself some room there, Grace. And that is a shocking waste of potential talent. Because I'm looking at the sheep. Well, Bella. So to help the girls develop their spatial abilities, I've given all the children tangram puzzles. These are games that brain train the children and help them develop spatial awareness skills. Keep it up. Okay. Wow. <laughs> so what you've done here is you've flipped it around so it's you've done like a mirror image. That's amazing that Finn. Look, have a look carefully. Whereabouts is the green green triangle? And can you put it where it is? So there's the green triangle. Then what comes next to it? Purple. But for some, my plan isn't working. I don't how to do them properly. A lot of the girls were struggling with it. And like Bradley and Finley on my table, they were really good at it. I'm worried that the children should be getting better at these puzzles, but the girls simply aren't. I want to find out if the difference between them is so marked because male and female brains are structurally different. As part of my experiment, I've been getting some insight from Dr. Gina Rippon. The brain is very, very plastic. That really refers to the notion of being moldable, changeable, that something isn't necessarily fixed and invariant which is what was all thought about the brain. So that's why it was assumed that if females had a particular brain, that was it, you know, you went along on those particular tram lines. But because we know that brains are very plastic, different experiences will change the brain. So lots of examples of boys having spatial skills because of Lego, but girls also play in a different way. If they like playing with dolls, etc. very often they'll uh, develop little scripts that mm. their toys have. So they become more verbal, more interactive, both of them really important skills, but they will be developing differently. So some of the behavioural differences that we see could relate not to the fact that this is a brain from a girl or a brain from a boy, but it's a brain from somebody who did play with Lego and somebody else who didn't play with Lego. But what does this pink and blue world look like to a parent? Hi, Hi Ali, Ali. How, how are you doing? doing? Yeah, fine, thank nice you. Nice to see you. To find out, I've come to the pinkest place I can think of. An eight-year-old girl's birthday party. 
in the pink tent. That's where the party is. It is very pink, yeah. isn't it? Yes. Happy birthday. Edie's party is an avalanche of pink. Sparkles and feather boas. So you like being a girly girl? Yeah. What does it mean to you to be a girly girl? Just be the girl. <laughs> Oh. Edie loves being pampered. Yeah. She loves having her nails done. Uh, makes her feel special. Uh, she loves all the sparkle that goes with it and the, the dressing up, glitter tattoos. Mm. Yeah, because it's all very pink and girly. Edie is having a great time. Um, that could be. Oh, wow. I've already got this. Oh. <laughs> But this focus on looks and appearance makes me feel uncomfortable. Okay. Gina has told me that if little girls play with certain toys, then it has a fundamental effect on how their brains develop. And dress-up dolls and craft sets won't help Edie become an engineer. Oh, what did you get her? So we've got some parts and crafts different highlighter pens, a multicoloured pom-pom ball for her school bag, oh, right, okay. and a big sort of eraser with that's also a pencil sharpener as well. Because girls just love Probably arts not. and crafts. Would yeah. you get that for a boy? No. <laughs> <laughs> it seems to me that when we give children the kind of presents that we think they want, all it does is affect what they are capable of. What's the deal for boys and the toys adults choose for them? Hello! Hey, you all right, Niall? How are you doing? Good. Upstairs? Yep. <laughs> I've come to see Niall to find out. You'll be surprised. Oh, look at this toolbox. So you've got actual huge toolboxes full of Lego. What's your favourite thing to play with? This. Oh, wow. That looks like that goes pretty high. Yeah. Does it? Did you build that? Yeah. I thought there'd be clothes in here. No, there's toys and guns. Oh my gosh. Lots of gun toys. Yeah, yeah. you're good this at shooting. This is my favourite. Can you imagine? Two cowboy guns. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, you like Lego, you like shooting guns, and you like your um, heroes. It's fair enough. Liked all of those things. What's the best thing about being a boy? They get cool Nerf guns than girls, because girls only get Nerf rebels that aren't better than the boys' Nerf guns. I have no idea what you're talking about, but the best thing about being a boy is you get to play with guns, is what I'm hearing. No, no <laughs> I get, boys get cool Nerf guns than girls. OK. So who are better then, boys or girls? Boys. Why? Because they get cooler stuff. <laughs> It's clear Niall loves his toys. But where does Mum Rebecca think that comes from? Pre-having him, I was a big fan of the nurture argument. I always thought it's how you bring them up, um, it's what you do with them, it's what you expose them to. Then I had Niall. <laughs> and far more is ingrained, far more is... Um, part of Niall than I ever realised. I had a bit of an anti-gun rule until he started school, um, but then he made them out of Lego and sticks and everything. And one day he said, uh, look, Mum, I've got a handgun. You can't take this one off me. Oh. And I knew about that point I'd probably lost the, the weaponry um, argument. It's totally, totally changed my, my view of, of all of it. Well, if that is the case, then what we're trying to do could actually be very difficult. I think you're going to struggle. Thanks, Niall. Uh -huh. Really, thanks for showing me your toys, OK? <laughs> Bye-bye, Becca. No thanks a lot. Okay. Children occupy a world where adults are giving them messages constantly about what it means to be a boy or a girl. So parents who say that it's in their child's nature just to uh, act a certain way or to like certain toys, it came from them. Uh, and they, in turn, receive the same messages from their parents, and so on and so forth. The cycle just goes on. And I believe this influence isn't just limited to choosing toys. It's also found in the clothes parents buy for their children. Best ever bro, cool dude. So let's just see what the equivalent for the girls is. So if we go to girls... Oh, God. I'm finding this upsetting, looking through these clothing websites. 
Nearly all of the online stores I've looked at here start with a girls, boys tab. So straight away you're, you're, you're separating the clothing. And then when you look at it, it's mainly pink and blue, but it's not just that, it's the slogans. For example, this one for girls, Forever Beautiful. This one for boys, Here Comes Trouble. Seem pretty harmless, and I think lots of people would dress their children in that. But I wonder if parents even think about that or even are aware of the link between the slogans and how their children think. So I am going to design some T-shirts to really explore that. I'm going to put my t-shirts with my slogans alongside the ones from the shops to see if the parents at Lane's End see any harm in it at all. Do you want to stay in here about the t-shirts? I've got another child to pick up. Oh, okay. But first, I just need the parents to stop for a minute. Would you like to just stay and wait and watch a t-shirt exhibit I've got? I can't, I've got sure. to go somewhere, but Okay, it's not a t-shirt exhibit. You sure you don't want to stop Maisie's mum? It's really interesting. Is it? Can you wait and see something on the T-shirts? I've got something to say. No? You happy not to say? You've been asked. George, nice to meet you. Eventually, a few parents come over to take a look. Hello. Hello. Oh. Hello. Where are the parents and the kids? How are you doing? So today, I wanted to show you some T-shirts and get your ideas about what they say. So what do you think of this? Forever beautiful. Would you let your daughter wear this? Yeah? Seems pretty OK. Well, what about? Looks are everything. Shake of the head. Did you know that in Mr. Andre's class in the school, when girls were asked to describe themselves, they only used words like lipstick, pretty. One of them even used the word ugly to describe themselves. And then the next one that says, boys are better. Would you dress your daughter in that? Would you wear it? No. No? When we ask the girls, who do you think are better, boys or girls? All of them except one said, boys are better made to be underpaid. Yet you all disagree? OK, but I think it's a sequence. I think when you start putting your daughter in this, forever beautiful, while you're just telling her that looks are everything, they end up thinking boys are better, and that results in them being made to be underpaid. At first, I didn't really see the problem, but as it progressed through the line of T-shirts and slogans, I could see the link between the first one and all the others. It kind of makes something that seems so innocent not really that innocent after all. To be honest with you, I never uh, thought about much about these things. Uh, we stereotype our kids mm -hmm. and the girl only be pretty, only appearance, OK? Not talking about what actually potential the girl can be. And it's not just girls. So, what does that say? Here comes trouble. Would you put your little boy in that? Seems pretty okay. Boys don't cry? Wrong. Would you, yeah? Would you put, would you let your boy wear that t-shirt or buy it for him? No. No? How about tough guys don't talk? <laughs> no? Wrong. Finally, bottled up and ready to burst. How many of you see your little boys unable to express themselves, getting all frustrated and angry. We did a little experiment with Mr. Andre's class and the boys were unable to use as many words to describe different emotions as the girls. And the only emotion they could really describe as well as the girls was anger. That's disturbing. For me, again, it's a sequence. When you put your boy in this T-shirt, which seems, oh, here comes trouble, isn't that fun? Well, it ends up being bottled up and ready to burst. I think it's something that we're maybe doing subconsciously because it's not something I'd have considered before. Because I think I grew up the same way, you know. We was always taught that, you know, boys are tough and things like that. Now it's been pointed out to me, I can definitely see the way that the, the message is being reinforced. And it's, yeah, it's certainly, I'll think twice before putting my little boy in a T-shirt that says, here comes trouble again, I think, definitely. When I finally managed to stop some parents, they were really shocked, actually. And I think I might have really got them to think hard about what clothes they put their children in. And I actually genuinely feel really frustrated that I couldn't have got many, many more parents to stop and listen. I think I need to step things up a little. Everything the children are saying. Boys are cleverer because most mathematicians are boys. Blue is for boys and pink is for girls. All you really see girls doing is having fun on their phones or maybe singing and they don't really do anything um, 
big, like being astronauts. And all I've learned from the testing at the beginning of term is telling me that the issues these children are facing are too big to fix just in the classroom. It's got a special laser on it. It's the camera. So if the parents aren't going to engage voluntarily, I'm going to have to be a bit more direct. I'm going to get the parents involved, but it's not going to be easy because they're not thinking that they're doing anything wrong. So um, what I've done is I've put together some exercises for them to do. Uh, for example, some gender word associations. So there's a long list of words here, and I'd like the parents to sit down, communicate with their children, and decide um, whether they think the, the word is more associated with boys, girls, or both. Other things including household chores. I'd like to get them to change what they do at home to try and show their children that both mum and dad can do all the chores. I'm also going to include some plastic sacks and I'd like them to put into those sacks anything in the house that's got messages on it that's reinforcing differences between the sexes. OK, get your things. Off you go. I've got Graham to ask the parents to stay behind to pick up their homework. <laughs> OK, parents. You know how the kids have homework? That's parents' homework. <laughs> it's only a few hours of the day in there, and there's quite a few hours at home. So we want to try and get the most out of this um, experiment as possible, OK? So there are quite a few asks in here, ranging from the way you speak, the activities you do, the chores you do, and who does them. These sacks are for you, please, to declutter the bedroom of anything that's excessively gendered. So for the girls, all the pink princessy things, and for the boys, all the superhero guns. How many sacks you got there? Four. <laughs> <laughs> Four big sacks. Do you think this is going to be easy? No. 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 There's a firm no from Riley's mum. Yeah. He's strong-willed, isn't yeah, he? Very strong-willed. Yeah. You can relate what you're doing in the house to what's been happening in the classroom and link it up. Just say, right, tell me what you've been doing in the classroom. If it's positive, I'd like now to do that at home, and this is part of that process. Take one of these A4 pockets and pass them out, and here are your sacks. Thank you. I can imagine the sacks are going to be hard. <laughs> cool. I just realised how girly everything Maisie owns is. <laughs> We have a wardrobe for dressing up princess dresses. So am I for roofs. <sighs> That's hard, isn't it? What's that? Nicknames. The nicknames to stop that, yes, because Mr Andre has been doing that in the class. And he thought losing that sort of... It's a tenderness. Losing that tenderness, that nickname, might be negative on the children, but he, he hasn't seen any of that. So, a little bit of homework. There are going to be some things in there that the kids themselves are going to resist, and then the parents are going to find that very hard to execute. It's easy enough for the parents to say, yes, we're going to do this, but let's see if they actually do it. Part of the homework was word association, going through lists of words often considered to have masculine or feminine characteristics. Hello. Hello, how are you? I'm fine, thank Thanks for you. having me. Hi, Maisie, how is it? Come on in. Are you good? Thanks yeah. for having me. And challenging the meaning that children attach to them. Dun, 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 dun. I'm keen to see how that's been going. Dun, 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 dun. Um, so this was the exercise where you had to do word association and a whole list yeah. of words, whether they were associated with boys yeah. or girls or both. Mm -hmm. And she has put every Everything. single one in both. That's yeah. interesting. And there are words like skipping rope. Yeah. Sewing, but there's also war, you know. I didn't know if she thought they should go in both. Yes. So I said to her at one point, which she told me off because she said, Javid said there is no right answer. <laughs> Got a little telling off there. Um, I kind of prompted her to put it in boy or girl just to see, and she was adamant. No, no, both. And she'd give me explanations and reasons why both do it. OK, great. It's encouraging that Maisie and her mum are starting to think differently. OK. But before I congratulate myself that the homework intervention is a success, 
there is still the small issue of bagging up the girly toys. And from the look of things, it's something that Michelle hasn't even attempted. So, I mean, the idea is to be quite strict, really, anything that's gendered. OK. We have a whole lot of princess going on. Wow! <laughs> Gosh, I'm afraid that has to go. OK. <laughs> this does seem a bit cruel. I know. We want Maisie to understand that, you know, she can aspire to more than just being a princess. princess. This okay. is actually quite an epic one, this. That was a birthday party dress. We did do princess and pirates. <laughs> did any of the girls come as pirates? Yes, I did have girly pirates. Well, girl pirates. Any boys come as princesses? No. No. <laughs> All right. Barbie dolls. We have many. Yes. Out of here. Yeah, so we'll take them out. <laughs> Emoji cushions. They can stay. They can stay. Ah, so we are finding one or two. Yeah. One or two toys that aren't skewed. It is overly girly. I don't think I realised until it was in a bag how girly it was, actually. I don't know how Maisie's going to react. Maybe she's going to be a bit upset, I think. I have a little girly stuff. <laughs> you know what you're doing at school? Yeah. All the changes that we've made there, we're trying to just continue that at home so that you get the fullest idea. Does that make sense? Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye. I know that children of Maisie's age choose many of their own toys, but it seems to me that isn't much of a choice if their options are limited by a world that only offers them pink for girls and blue for boys. I think it goes some way to explain why men and women follow such different paths in life. Research by the Institute of Engineers found that toys with a science and engineering focus were three times more likely to be targeted at boys. It seems like tough love, but this parent homework is about changing the environment. And in this case, removing the toys is all about levelling out the skill differences through play. Now, for me, it's all about the bigger picture. I really hope all the parents get this idea. If there's one thing I've learned from visiting the children's homes, it's that they really love their toys and it doesn't seem fair to me to remove them without offering them a replacement. But I want to prove, when we see Niall with his guns or Maisie with her dolls, it's a preference that is in many ways learned. I want to see what will happen if I give them toys where I've removed all packaging that would normally tell a child if a toy was for a boy or a girl. Inside the paper bags are some toys. Look at my bag! I've given the children either a marble run, a teddy bear sewing kit, an arts and crafts set, or a robot model. Oh, it's a marble. What do you do with four gloves? That goes there. Well, which one do you like better, the bear or the bunny? One boyish. The next morning, I'm keen to see how the children got on. So I've asked them to design a poster for their toy. I think it's, like, aimed at boys, cos it's kind of green. Boys like buy that stuff because of what the outside package looks like. Yeah. Most yeah. of the time, because they make it look more girly or more boyish, don't they? Yeah, yeah I sometimes. actually agree with that completely. <clears throat> completely? Wow, I've never heard you say that before. <laughs> These new toys have become a talking point for the class. Riley, what do you think about it? I think it? it's for boys and girls. If there were lots and lots of things in a shop, would you buy something like this normally? That's hard, cos I'll get Lego. Yeah. I will get a football thing. Mm -hmm. I'll get... I like a Build-A-Bear teddy. So you wouldn't normally go for something like this, but because it was given to you, have you enjoyed it, though? Yeah. Yeah, so do you think you'd do something like this again? Yeah. You do? Thank you. When I first opened it, I was like, Mum, 
I gave me a boyfriend. Then when I actually started doing it, I got really into it and I, and I begged Mum to go to town and buy me some more stuff like this. Really? That's really so nice. I think that for boys and girls, even though they're packaging, they usually make it look really girly or really boyish. I'm particularly pleased with Riley, who loved his sewing kit. <laughs> My mum couldn't make it. Couldn't she? No. So you I have to do it. it. Did you? Hopefully, this will see him on the path to a whole new range of creative and nurturing skills, which should be reflected in his scores for empathy and emotional vocab when we retest the class. I think yours goes backwards. That's no, what no, because that's why the eyes are there. It seems clear to me that if you take pink and blue out of the equation and encourage children to play with a wider range of toys, they'll like them. It has an effect. For the boys, like Riley, to develop creativity and nurturing skills, while most of the girls have taken to the construction toys like ducks to water. When I first met Graham's class, it was striking how strong their opinions were when it came to the roles of men and women in society. Girls look after the child and boys do lots of cool stuff. If the woman has a child, the men have to go to work and earn some money. These are very set ideas about who does what when it comes to life at home. Mums wash up and do the dinners. But they also reflect what the children think men and women can achieve. If they go unchallenged, then equality in adult life is never going to happen. Men usually uh, just lie on the sofa and snore. As part of the homework I set the parents, I wanted to challenge these ideas, especially when it came to getting dads up off the sofa. What is surprising is that the children are telling me one thing about how the chores are shared at home, but the dads are telling me something very different. I don't think so. It's different between me and my wife. I cook, she cook. Uh... I do gardening, she do it gardening. Everything is equal in our family and should be, you know, like that. A bit more, do you think? Yeah, put some more on. And the facts are on the children's side. Yeah. Yeah? Uh-huh. A study by the Office of National Statistics found that across the country, women do 60% more unpaid work, cooking, childcare, housework, than men. What do you think of that in Gracie? Good. Good? Good. Taste test person. Yeah, do you want a bit? Out of ten. Ten. Ten? Wow. What is shocking is that there is no reason to think that these dads don't help out. But even when they do, it has no effect on the children's assumptions about who should, in their minds, be doing these jobs. I want to see what will happen when the children are given the opportunity to take on these jobs outside the classroom. Here we go. Who's excited? Yay! Yay! Will they go with their assumptions? Or will having seen their dads up their commitment to domestic chores at home have rubbed off? Who can see the scene? Yay! So I've organised a school day trip to the beach to find out. Oh, look at that sand. Soft That's good, sand. doesn't it? I've set up two tasks for the children. Build a fire pit yeah, and nice make a picnic. Circle around here. At the, the start of my time on the Isle of Wight, I've no doubt that these children would have thought that picnic making was a woman's job and that fire making was a man's. I want to see if those views have changed. I'd like you guys to just start prepping the beach area. Some of you need to start preparing the picnic and some of you need to start preparing the fire which we'll have 
to toast marshmallows later. Fire. Decide between yourselves who's going to do what while Mr. Andre and I start preparing the activities. OK? <laughs> They just split into two almost equal numbers yeah. of groups. I mean, I think it's 10 and 12, 10 and 12 we've got. So. It is, yes. OK. I thought they'd all go for the fire pit, as yeah. it sounds, you know, it's quite an exciting thing. And actually, in terms of boys and girls, I think there are just more girls on this one. On the, the picnic, picnic group, yes. And I'm surprised about which boys are actually at the picnic group. You've Absolutely. got Bradley, Riley and Finn. So actually, three of the strongest footballing type boys. It's a great start. Girls seem to have grown in confidence and assertiveness. Oh, we need to cut up the slippers. Yeah. I think Lily's conducting an orchestra there. Yeah, Lily's really ta she's just taken over, hasn't she? What can we use oh. to, to get put on the vegetables in? She seems to have an idea of what needs to be she's happening. Very much in and the she's the centre. Yeah, and the others seem to be going with that. Yeah, you can still dig with yeah. your hands. Funnily enough, it's Cara that seems to have taken a bit of charge on this one. Um, and brought the group together. Yes, she to work. did. And the boys are happy doing a task that just a few weeks ago they never would have tried. They need to be thinner, don't they? Don't you? No, cut them in quarters, cut them in halves, cut them in halves. Oh, I'm winning! I'll teach you how to do it. I'll teach you how to do it, yeah. But before long, some of the boys revert to type. So, Riley and Bradley seem to be doing their own task over there, is that right? Yeah, yeah. we're trying to make World War II. Why have you stopped doing this? Because it's hard. Why is it hard? Because, like, if I'm not a girl, like, every time I go... Riley! This is my trench, yeah. So what made you come over here? Um, we got bored doing that. Doing the picnic? Yeah. Why? It the girls. Right, well, it would be good if you can go back to what you'd started doing, please. Is that OK? Uh, we can't have a third activity. Come on. Good job. Come on, Bradley. Come on, Riley. There's still some sort of stereotypical behaviour going on here, uh, particularly with a few of the boys losing interest really quickly with preparing the picnic. You know, you ask Riley, why did you get bored of it? Oh, well, it's for girls. That might just be because it reflects what their day-to-day -day activity might have been at the beach. Mum would prepare the picnic, Dad prepare the fire. And that's exactly what I'm trying to challenge here today. OK, let's all have lunch, kids. Yay! Come and sit down. These sandwiches are amazing. I made those sandwiches. This is what you What's a trip to the seaside without beach games? And over my time with the children, I've learnt that one game has a huge amount of power over the boys. It's how they define themselves, and girls are very much excluded. When I grow up, I want to be a football player. Who's better at football, boys or girls? Boy. Why? Because they just are. Do you ever play with the boys at playtime? Not often, because they usually play in football. When the boys play, it gets a bit rough. Football seems to be massive currency at the school, particularly for the boys, of course. So how good you are at it, um, how much you know about it, really seems to define you as a boy's boy. But I've talked to some of the girls, and they actually really want to play. They just don't have a chance. Oh, Hi, kids. Oh, 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 for Riley. I haven't even said what we're doing yet, Riley. The activity this afternoon is football. Yeah. There's going to be a match at the end of the day. Yeah. But you've got to practice first. I'd like you to practice together in mixed teams, all right? So how about everyone to this side go and practice over there? Everyone on that side go and practice over there as one team, OK? The children couldn't be clearer. <laughs> Boys are good at football, girls aren't. But everything I've seen so far says any difference is purely down to practice. And just like with Tangram puzzles, with practice, the plasticity of the brain will mean the girls will get better. Boys and girls have got the same bones in their legs, they've got the same pair of eyes. Actually, gram for gram, they're the same strength. So why are boys better at football? 
because they do it more. And girls could be just as good at this age if they had a chance to do that practice. The practice is going OK. The children are running around with the odd example of boys helping girls. But now I want to test for a deeper change in the boys' attitudes to the girls. I'm going to offer a choice. And their answer will give me an idea of just how far they've come over the last four weeks. OK. That was a really good practice session. Now it's time for the match. <laughs> but I'm going to give you the option to revert back to boys versus girls. Do you want to do that? Oh, yeah, 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 Often. So I'm hearing that you'd like to stay in the mixed team because otherwise the boys will beat the girls and yeah. it won't be fair. And it'll be like 12 nil. Okay, hands up for who wants to stay in the mixed teams. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. That's it. And who wants to stay in the boys versus girls? Four of them. Five of them. Okay, so we'll stay mixed. Yeah! <laughs> Let's do red to the right and green to the left. Here we go, greens. As I see it, this is a big moment for Riley, who's showing real empathy. He has worked out that a boys versus girls match simply wouldn't be fair, and that wouldn't be any fun for the girls or the boys. Go kick! Because there were some shouts for going boys versus girls, definitely. And so it was surprising that it was Riley. I was disappointed in Riley when he said that preparing the picnic was for girls, but then when it came to the football, he's the one who tilted the children towards voting for staying in mixed teams, which is really nice. I'm making them go. Turn to the game, go shake hands. Good game. I think girls don't play football as much because they think boys are better. I liked it because it was mixed. I don't really get a chance to play football with the boys much. Since I joined them at the start of term, I think the children's attitudes about what it means to be a boy or a girl have changed. Although I still worry it could all just be skin deep. But it just makes me wonder whether all of the changes I've made are still quite superficial in their minds. And that therefore begs the question, will this show in the end? So when I come to retest them, are we going to see any positive differences from the beginning to the end? It's the last day of term. We're retesting the children in Graham's class, looking for any changes in their ability to express emotion, assertiveness, self-confidence and empathy. To help us be sure that any differences are down to my interventions, we're also testing the neighbouring control class, who followed normal lessons. I'm excited to know if a whole term of trying to treat the boys and girls as equals has altered their thinking in any way. Has my experiment worked, or has it all just been a bit of fun for the children? So, for the results. At the start of term, there was an 8% difference in self-esteem levels between girls and boys. Encouragingly, it's now only 0.2%. I think I can do anything now, because I know that I can be anything I want to be. Some stuff I'm not allowed to do, but when I'm older, I definitely can do anything. 
no girls now describe themselves as ugly, opting instead for words like unique and happy. Boys' pro-social behavior, that's their kindness to others, is up by 10%. And their ability to identify emotions has improved. I think the boys have been nicer to the girls sometimes. I think boys have learnt to be more caring. Girls' self-motivation has shown an increase of 12%. And the girls were an incredible 40% more accurate when asked to predict their scores before a test. I would describe a girl now more cleverer, more stronger, and more smarter. One of the biggest changes we've seen is in the boys' bad behavior, which has gone down a whopping 57%. I think it's better to express yourself than getting angry. I don't think I stop anymore, because I just tell people. I've learned it's better to talk than stop. And finally, the Tangram puzzles that test spatial ability. After just two weeks of practice, we found that the top ten pupils are now five boys and five girls. These results are really encouraging and show that the children have started to change in ways that may have a profound effect in later life. The difference between them is eight. But for me, what is most striking is that all these changes have taken place in a matter of weeks. I'd love to see similar changes attempted in schools everywhere. You can see it in the class, you can see the confidence in these children that they didn't have before. Now they're sort of challenging things a lot more, which I think is brilliant because, of course, as they go through life, things they're told and things they're told to do aren't always going to be things that they agree with. And actually, I think the skills that they're picking up now is actually we can challenge that. And of course, if they go through life and want to challenge those things, they probably feel they can now, whereas they couldn't before. Uh, um... Shh, Nancy. Stop, Lexi, please. But like, Nancy, why aren't you doing something on your iPad? I don't know, you've turned these kids into monsters. The girls. Yeah, the girls, the girls they were never that. like it before. <laughs> <laughs> it's the end of term assembly. And Graham and the class have prepared a special performance to show the other children, the parents, and the head teacher, Caroline Sice just what they've learned. I'm a little nervous to see what they've come up with. This is our poem, Girls and Boys. We have learned boys can bake in the kitchen. Girls can go on a boat fishing. Boys can be sensitive. And girls can be strong. We have learned being equal. It's not wrong. Toys shouldn't be just for girls and boys. Change your opinion on gendered toys. Cars can be liked by all. A light can blue and pink is cool. Boys can dance and girls can fix. <laughs> boys can do makeup and girls can do tricks. Any gender can build a fire pit and toast marshmallows when it is lit. Javi was the best at it. Boys and girls can make a tea and help us to achieve our dream. Boys and girls, its confidence have grown. We work in mixed teams and not on our own. We've changed our thought about girl and boy roles. Men can wash dishes and women can do a house. Boys and girls can both be caring. When we work, we are always caring. Believe in yourself, either girl or boy. Even if you want to be a pirate. Ahoy! Ahoy! <laughs> Three gender fits it's true. It's true. If you make a change in you. That was good. That was good. That was good.
It's really good to hear that the children have taken so much on board. Well, I'm Javid, everyone. If you haven't met me before, uh, there's many but places. But what does the head teacher think of my gender neutral experiment? Yeah. What do you think, Mrs. Sice, about potentially continuing it or expanding it? Uh, well, I've been really impressed with the results and seeing the change in the children. We thought we were doing lots on being a gender neutral school, but actually, it needs much more specific strategies in classrooms to make that change. So we will be carrying it on. And I've already asked Mr Andre to come and teach us how to have a gender neutral classroom so that we really make sure that boys and girls are equal in their confidence, in their aspirations, in their beliefs. Thank you, Mr Sass. I would never have expected... Sorry, I'm going to get emotional. Sorry. I've never seen Maisie stand up and speak like that in front of a crowd. It was, sorry. <laughs> How pathetic am I? <laughs> you better not be filming this. <laughs> Give me a second. No. She's like, you know, I want to be seen, I want to be heard, and it's brilliant because it's what we've strived for for years. I think what's changed about me is my confidence because it's grown and before I wouldn't do something like that in front of the whole school, my voice would crackle. He's been more loving to his sister, so I suppose he's been more empathetic to his sister. Um, and he's not so boisterous. I've completely changed my opinion now, because now I know boys and girls can do anything they want. Already, it's made us think about how we're going to bring Summer up so that it's more gender neutral for her. Boys and girls aren't different, they're equal. The changes I've made at Lane's End aren't rocket science. Just a few small interventions to make sure the children are getting the simple message that they are all equal. I think every school in the country could do exactly the same. Look at where they were at the beginning and look at them now. And imagine the possibilities for all our children's futures if this is rolled out in every classroom and every school. That's why I'm excited, because it's a small change, it's relatively easy to do, but what we have to gain is enormous.